Hiya. Hello. Welcome to the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dammy, also known as Dammy Stoodles. And we're glad to have you today. Remind me to tell you something about my Ravelry username in a second. Okay. We'd like to say, oh, oh, do I say the episode of the date before I welcome people? I don't know. This is why I'm all confused. Thoughts. I know. Um, we'd like to say a big welcome back. We love you guys. To all our returning viewers, and a big hi after the new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. Hope you enjoy the show. No, I normally say it first. Today is Thursday, the 4th of April, 2019, and this is episode 339. Dammy, nobody introduced themselves to the Ravelry group this week. Um, would you tell people what they should do and why? You should join our group on Ravelry and introduce yourself in our introduction thread because you'll get a shout out on our next episode and be able to participate in all our owls and giveaways. Okay, so you know how um, there's the thing where in the pro account, on Ravelry where we sell our patterns where you can contact Casey and he will give you, he will make you a short link for people can just pop in their coupon codes. Yeah. Okay. So ours is ravel.me slash Java Pearl. Uh-huh. Right. My Ravelry username is Java Pearl and the short links on your project. So you know how on, Um, Instagram, Ravelry has been sharing WIP, uh, Work in Progress Wednesday pictures. Mm -hmm. Well, if you try to go to my short link, any of my short links, it automatically directs you to the coupon code page. So I'm wondering if I should like change my username to like CC underscore almond, which is what I am on Instagram. You should ask to make, you should ask for the original short link to be deleted and make the coupon code short link Java Pearl designs. Yes, but we published places that the link is ravel.me slash Java Pearl. I don't know. So I'm thinking about changing my username just to my name, CC underscore Alden, because that is my Instagram username as well. Hmm. So we'll see. I might do that. This just popped into my head yesterday because I was like going to share something and I went, oh, it doesn't work. Because it thinks you're trying to get to a place to enter a coupon code for a pattern. The more you know. So, I might be changing my username, just FYI. Um, Well, we've got quite a bit of stuff to talk about, especially in yummies. And I have more than one FO this week. Three. Three whole FOs. You what? Three FOs. I know. So, why don't we get started so we can talk about them? And now we're going to talk about what's on our needles. So what's on your needles, Debbie? Um, um, Well, weren't you going to show us some stuff that you're doing in your design class? Or did you bring it in there with you? I gave it to my professor to grade. Oh, well, why don't you tell us what you had to do? Because it was really cool when you showed me. Maybe you can so, show us later a picture of it or something. Yeah, so we were studying lines and like different types of lines and how and the and how they like just how they function together. And so we did one project where we had to divide a section of paper into four quadrants and put different types of line in, in each quadrant. And so, and it made this really like, like nice looking abstract piece. It was very pretty. This is, um, this is your, is it intro to theater design is the class? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And then we did another one, which I didn't like as much where we had to m- pencil in a grid and then try to repeat a one line object that we uh-huh. would draw in each section of the grid. Okay. And so just like the point of it was to show that you can't um, make it perfect every time. Uh, okay. Because like your, your autopilot will kick in and try to do something else or like your hand will shake or the quality of it will start deteriorating or it'll be larger on one or smaller on the other. So, yeah. Oh, cool. 
Yeah. Well, maybe once you get your uh, get the especially the first one back from your, your professor, you can like take a picture and post it and show us because mm -hmm. it was really cool. Look, I really liked it. It was like something that you could put on a wall or something because it was it was really cool how the lines all work together. So, all right. And are you doing anything? What are you doing right now with theater? You're not in the current play. No, I'm doing box office stuff, cool. but I've got a. St a friend's senior project, a staged okay. reading of it, a performance this Saturday. So okay. Did have you told them what what the um what like the the what it's about like generally? Have you, I can't remember if we've talked about it on the podcast. It's a short jukebox, short one act jukebox musical written by my friend, and it's about um just being what it's like to be a, be a teenager. Cool. Okay, very awesome. Yeah, right. I have not had time to do anything because of Francais? excursions in modern mathematics. Oh, yeah. And France. Um, <laughs> not France, French. Duh. So did, did you see the YouTube comment on the last week's episode that was in French? No. I um, I responded to it this morning, but I had to. I understood some of it, but I had to Google Translate to get all of it. I can't remember exactly what it said. Um, I about, will look it up when we're done with this section. Yeah, it was something about that you were you were making doing the French phrases very well, very well, and um, if you wanted to practice talking, she, she would talk with you. Mm. It was sweet. <laughs> so that just popped in my head because you said you were working on your French stuff. So. All right, anything else you would like to speak about? No. Okay. So what's on your needles? Well, I have four things on my needles. First up is my 10 stitch zigzag blanket, which is a free pattern by Frankie Brown. I'm on US 4's 3.5 mil needles. And I have finished 65 stripes, which puts me at 93% done. And I'm working on the 66th stripe, which is in Owl About Yard Sparkle Owl in the Geeky Girls Knit Turns 5 colorway. And I think I've done 11 and a half zigzags because I just had to change the fold yesterday to be able to work on it. So yeah, I think I'm at 11 and a half. So that puts me at eight and a half to go. So I should be done with this stripe by next week, right? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, I should be done with this stripe and starting it on the next one. Uh, when we record next week. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm working on is um, the third pair of socks from my friend Mel. I'm using my French vanilla cappuccino sock pattern that you can get on Ravelry. I'm on US one and a half, two and a half little needles, and the yarn is Patton's Croy socks in the Clover Colors colorway. I, I think I had this one done last week when I when we recorded, hmm. but I have now done, finished the foot heels done and I'm working on the leg. So I feel like I probably will have these done by next week. Um, and then I have to figure out what yarn I'm going to use for the Dr. Hubs birthday socks. Hmm. I might do, I have quite a bit of leftovers, especially because I picked out the last few colorways already for my zigzag blanket. So maybe I'll do like some Franken Frankenstein socks, like where you do like 10 rows in a color and then change and do another, the next color. Um, but I would weave in the ends as I go versus having to weave them all in later. So that maybe we'll see. That might be what I do. And then I'm working on the, my favorite murder mystery wrap on US two and a half, three and a half, US two and a half, three mil needles, and US four, 3.5 mil needles using Suburban Stitcher Sock in the Triflers Need Not Apply colorway. Um, thank you so much to everybody who purchased a kit, pre ordered a kit. I had to place an order with Diane for, I believe it was 135 skeins of yarn. And Diane of Suburban Stitcher is doing that. Uh, I had to place 
a big order with Ann Tudor, who's doing the glass stitch marker sets. And I had to order 30 t-shirts from my friend Amanda of Nerdy Knits and Designs because the full kits sold completely out. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So thank you to everybody who did that. Uh, my, my, my people are working on the things and the, the, the kits will be shipped out no later than the 12th of May. But I'm hoping a bit earlier than that. It just depends on when, when my, um, my people get their, get their stuff um, done and sent to me so that I can then pack up all the boxes. And Danny's not going to be able to be home to help me. But my friend Joanne from Knitting Group has offered to help. So I, um, <laughs> they have not brought them yet, but I had to order uh, boxes from the post office. <laughs> And our local post office didn't have enough in stock. So they're having to come like from the regional warehouse. Hmm. So, and then yesterday I did the thing. I was like, I need something that I, so that I don't have to keep referring back to the orders and figuring out who needs what, because some people ordered a couple of small kits, like so they order for themselves and a friend or whatever. Um, and the t-shirts like the sizing. So what I did is, I have um, some of the labels that are like, they're the eight and a half by 11 sheets, but there's, they're the rectangular labels. So there's like, I think there's like 10 in each column and there's three columns. So what I did is I put the person's name, I put how much yard they're getting, how many, how many stitch marker sets they're getting and what size their shirt is. So that way I can just like pop that on the box and that way we know packing it up and then we can print the postage and put over the top of that. Yeah. So I think that will make things easier versus having to complete, you know, constantly be referring back to the orders. Hmm. So the last thing I'm working on, which is not knitting, but is on a needle. I'm so excited, Danny. Are you ready to see this? Am I? Ah, my bollocks cross stitch. So I finished all the flowers. And um, while I was waiting for the Dr. Hubs to leave for work so that I could tell him bye and get my shower, I did the first part of the vine. So there's a, so here's the thing. So there's a vine coming out the top of this one down to the bottom and then from the bottom of the middle one up to the top and then down here. So, um, yeah, I had thought I might have this done before we recorded, but um, as you'll hear about in FOs in a minute, I um, forgot. I, um, I thought... I had more time for something I wanted to knit, but I didn't, so I had to throw it in right quick. So that's everything that's on my needles. I'm hoping to be done with these next week. I'm hoping to be done with the bollocks cross stitch for next week. Uh, I will be finished with the, the 66th stripe on my blanket next week for next week. So lots of progress and um, hoping to move on to some other things. So. Well, that is everything in my long-winded way of telling you what was on my needle. So, so let's uh, move on over to um, the next segment. And now we're going to talk about your finished projects. Three of them, you guys. Okay, so, and I hope this is not too weird because people might be like, Cece, you're, why are you doing this? But you know what? I wanted to, so I did. So my doctor is so fan freaking tastic. I adore her. I have to travel from here in Bremerton across on the ferry to Seattle and up to Shoreline to be able to see her every three months because as part because I'm on some controlled substances for uh, pain like the pain I have with my fibromyalgia. So I have to see her every three months to be like drug tested and everything to make sure I'm not like abusing the medication or seeking out drugs from other places or using illegal drugs or whatever. But anyway, so I've got, I've got to be, have a pretty good relationship with her. And they think she has even said, if you want us to find you a doctor over on the other side, so you don't have to travel, we will. And I'm like, no, she's like the best doctor I've ever had. So I don't want to change. Anyway, she's having a baby, a little girl. And I wanted to get something for her. And this is, I have an appointment on Monday with her. And this is the last time I'm going to see her before she goes on her maternity leave. And so all of a sudden I was like, crap, my appointment's on Monday. I haven't knit her anything. So what I did 
was I did her a couple of barley hats and I used, okay, so this is the barley hat pattern by Tin Can Knits. I used US 5, 3.75 mil needles and US 6 is 4 mil needles because I, the pattern is written, I believe, for worsted weight and I wanted to use DK weight. Mm -hmm. So what I did, since the baby is due like early summer, baby doesn't need a hat really for most of, most of the summer. I mean, maybe when, if it's a little chilly in the mornings or whatever. So what I did was I made the, the baby, no. I think I made the toddler size, the, that stitch count, because I was using finer yarn. So it will fit the baby in the autumn and winter when she will need a hat. So I did two different ones. This one is out of Verde Softy Baby uh, in the pink rainbow colorway. And of course, pom poms. And this other one is in the Verde Softy Baby in the Princess Pebbles colorway. Aww. Are they adorable? Aww. I love, love, love how this yarn pooled. It looks so freaking cool. And I love how the colors like do fun things in the pom poms. So I will take these to her on Monday so that she can have them for her wee little baby. Okay, now then. So I think I told y'all several episodes ago or whatever that I was going to contact the Seattle Children's Hospital to see if they needed any preemie hats because I had ha we'd had a friend whose daughter had to be in the NICU there for like three and a half, four weeks or such. Um, so I contacted them and they don't need preemie hats right now, but she did say that they would be collecting for Clip for Babies. So um, I should have pulled this up. Hold on just a second. Um, Click for Babies is a uh, organization that is trying to educate parents about the the cry the the period of crying that a baby can have, especially uh, early on, mm -hmm. and um, they use a phrase they use the color purple, but each letter stands for something. So they're trying to educate parents so that they, to try to help end shaken baby syndrome. So the first P is for like the peak of crying. Your baby may cry more each week than most in month two than less in months three to five. The U is unexpected. Crying can come and go and you don't know why. R is resist soothing. Your baby may not stop crying no matter what you try. The other P is for pain like face. A crying baby, they look like they're in pain even when they are not. The L is for long-lasting, crying can last as much as five hours a day or more. And the E is for evening, your baby may cry more in the late afternoon and evening. So they collect hats that are at least 50% purple to give to parents uh, of the newborns to help them remind them that the baby crying is normal. And to try to help them remember not to get angry or frustrated to try to lessen or get rid of hopefully permanently any cases of shaken baby syndrome. So the hospital told me they were going to be collecting those. One of the rules though for Click for Babies is you can't put pom poms on hats. But so I have four four different skeins of purple yarn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix and match them with like, I've got some tans, I've got some grays, uh, and just do some like striping or such. So I used my preview hat pattern, but I used the one that went up to, it increases to 60 stitches because um, I looked at some of the patterns on their website and for the needle size I use, 60 stitches is, is the size that they're wanting. So my top-down preview hat pattern is free on Ravelry if you want to make hats. Um, I used US 6's 4 mil needles, and the yarn is Lion Brand Heartland in the Hot Springs colorway and Reynolds Playtime in the Tan colorway. I think next time I'm going to bake it to where the color change doesn't happen right there so that it doesn't have the, the pearl bump thingies right there. Yeah. 
there are also some on the top. I mean, it's fine, but and this I know it's showing more blue on the camera, but it actually is kind of a deep, rich purple. So I'm going to knit some of these um, and then donate them to the Seattle Children's Hospital. Uh, I should put, would you put a note for me to put a link in the show notes to the Click for Babies website so if people want to get involved with that, they can. And that is everything that I finished this week. So I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show. Yummies. What are yummies, Dammy? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. So, Dammy, remember that I told everyone that I had shipped the baby blanket that I had made for my nephew, Waylon, uh, because his original baby blanket got damaged and I tried to repair it and it did not work out well so I did him a new one. So I had mailed it last week when we recorded and it actually arrived the day we recorded. Um, so my sister and my mama knew it was on the way but they didn't tell Waylon so he could be surprised and I had addressed the parcel to him. So my sister like took some video that she was like, you can't show this video to anyone but I want you to see you to see him open it. <laughs> so she sent me this video and she sent me photos and he was so excited opening it up and he, as you can see the photos that are on the screen, he wrapped up in it and he loved it. And I'm like, so I saw the photos first and then I started watching the video that my sister sent. And then all of a sudden I got a FaceTime call for my sister and she was like, he couldn't wait to talk to you. And he was like, Aunt Cece, you're my favorite Aunt Cece, Aunt Cece. <laughs> it was adorable. So he's in love with his blanket and all's well that ends well. I'm done knitting baby blankets unless Dammy has children and, I, and she wants me to knit one for them. No pressure there. If you don't have children, that's okay too. Whatever <laughs> happens. What? What did you say? Nothing. Oh, okay. No pressure there. I'm just saying that. In case you do. You say it every time you've mentioned Waylon's blanket. I know, because I was done knitting baby blankets. I was like, no more, no more baby blankets. No, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. So, anyway. Um, okay, so um, as y'all know, I just got a text message from my doctor's office asking me to confirm my appointment for Monday. So there you go. Um, as y'all know, um, I have recently ha had a become an obsession with hashtag big earrings are rad. And uh, I ordered some more earrings. So wait, let me cover this part up because it's a coupon code. These earrings are from 77 Chic Creations. So I ordered some earrings from her. First up are these ones that I'm currently wearing. They're sweet little kitty cats. And it's kind of uh, tumble colors. And I was like, because I have a kitty necklace, but I didn't have any kitty earrings. So I needed some kitty earrings. Very important. I also got these. Mm. Yes. And... Um, so Dammy has this really cute outfit that is green mermaid leggings with a purple like shorts jumpsuit type thing that's got the romper. Romper, there you go. That's got little mermaid stuff on it. And I was like, oh, these would be the perfect earrings. So they're little mermaids for Dammy. So I will bring them to her on Monday when I go see her after my doctor's appointment. And she was so sweet. She also sent a um, spring is coming, like, magnetic. That, that, snail, yeah. that snail looks like it has a cat's mouth. It, it kind of looks like a lava almost face to me. It looks like a cat snail. Okay. So anyway, it's a magnetic one. So I think she got it at the Target dollar spot probably. Yes. I recognize that uh, one dollar thing there. So, um, 
so yeah, so I put a link to her sh- her shop in the show notes if you want to go check out her earrings. She's got some really good prices and some really cute earrings. So I think, knock on wood, this is my last earring purchase for a little while because I have gotten a lot of new earrings in the last few weeks. But I'm wearing them and I'm loving them. And they're awesome. <laughs> I th- first I thought somebody was knocking on the door at, in the room you're in. No. Okay, Gabby, you saw a couple of shows this last week. Will you tell us about them? Yeehaw. So, <laughs> so um, first I saw Romeo and Juliet Saturday night at um, ACT Theater here in Seattle. Uh-huh. It was really fun. Um. Anyone? I know you're gonna say something to lead me on. So, no, I was just gonna say, is there any particular actors or actresses that you were really pleased with their performance or thought they did a really good job? It was really cool to see him. Who? Howie Seagull. It because it totally cracked me up when you told me who remind me who he was, and then I told the Dr. Hubs and he thought it was really funny too. So tell them now. Howie Stego is a deaf actor. He is most known to people from the Star Trek Next Generation episode Loud as a Whisper, where he played Reva. But in Romeo and Juliet, he played Fire Lawrence. And Reva was the one where he had three people that spoke for him. Was it there one that was like, one was like emotional and one was like head and... Maybe, I don't really remember the episode. I just remember the <laughs> him. And then one of them gets killed, and it's, like, devastating to him because mm-hmm. he doesn't have somebody to speak for him in that manner anymore. It was a really good episode. So yeah. that was cool. When you, t- when you start saying, uh, you know, do you remember the Star Trek Next Generation episode? I was like, who in the world from Star Trek Next Generation, besides Patrick Stewart, has done Shakespeare? I mean, there might be. Gate, did, did Gates McFadden do some Shakespeare? I'm pretty, pretty sure. Like, if, if you went through the whole thing, and you, I'm pretty sure you'd find people doing some Shakespeare. Maybe Shakespeare is very common. I know, but none of them. I mean, like the the type of actor that does something like a science fiction TV show versus Shakespeare. That's a very different type of acting. Mm. Is what I was trying to say. That's all I was trying to say. Sorry. Okay. And then you went, do you have anything else to say about that show? It was really good. Okay. And then you saw another show. Yes. Um, so Joshua Castile, who is also a deaf actor, he played Romeo in that production, and he played Quasimodo last year at the Fifth Avenue's Hunchback of Notre Dame. Um, he held a cabaret with his co-star in Hunchback, who was the voice of Quasimodo, E.J. Cardona. And they just did a fun little cabaret together where they sang and signed things and it was really fun. Cool. What and was your it, favorite what was your favorite song that they did? I don't know. They just did they just did so many fun ones. Um the very last one that they did, Shut Up and Dance With Me. I don't know if that's actually the name of the song. That's the chorus of the song. It's yeah. got a couple lines of Romeo and Juliet imagery in it and um his Juliet Gabriella O'Fallon was in the audience so he made her come on the stage and Aww. shut up and dance with him. So, oh that's sweet. Yeah. That's sweet. That's fun. Um are there any other shows that you are planning to see in the near future? Yes. <laughs> what, what what shows are you planning to see? Um, Marie dancing still at the Fifth Avenue Theater, Lightning Thief at the Fifth Avenue, You're in Town. I might want to see that one. I might, I might want to see Lightning Thief with you. Okay. If Come we can make down. it work. What is it? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, okay. <sighs> yeah. And you, you and I are going to see A Wrinkle in Time at Seattle Pacific together. Yeah. Well, that reminds me. I need to still reschedule my work for that night because I'm still listed during the night. Yes, you should do Oops. that because I'm, I'm coming over from over here to there to see it with you. Mm-hmm. I will do that. So, so yeah, just had a fun weekend. That's awesome. You should, you should find a show that's in French and then that way you could practice I made, 
I've, I've made a playlist of musicals that are in French. I know, but you, a live one to go see. Is there any going on? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I just thought it'd be fun. Okay, anything else you want to say about shows? No, you. Okay, so um, I ordered some stickers from Citrus Gummy Bear on Etsy. There's a link in the show notes. Look at this cute card that she sent me. Love that. If you want it, you can have it. I do. Okay, I'll bring it. my desk. Okay. Um, okay. She, I actually only... Accidentally, it was me. I accidentally hit a button. I was trying to open thought, my calculator. I thought you maybe accidentally said something that sounded like H-E-Y-S-I-R-I. Hey, Siri. Well, she's not listening. Okay. Um, so I had ordered these, uh, my favorite murder stickers from her, and there was a delay in getting them sent out to me, so she actually sent me two sheets. But I need to cover up one of, the, one of them because it has language on it. So there's my favorite murder, there's mini sodes, crime scene, do not cross, you're in a cult, call your dad, Elvis want a cookie, and then some fingerprints, and murderino and planterino, and then this one that's got the floral around it says F politeness. So I thought it would be fun to put these in my bullet journal on the days that I release, I'm releasing the My Favorite Murder Mystery Rap Clues. Mm -hmm. So that's why I ordered them because they were really cute. So uh, yeah, she's on Etsy if you want to get your own My Favorite Murder stickers. Um, and I think that's about it. Anything else for Yummies that you can think of, Debbie? A friend and I might be going to see Marie this weekend, but okay, that's cool. That's about it. Cool. All right. Well, then let's talk about hashtag GDK Crafty Pet. What is it, Dammy? It stands for GDK Girls Night Crafty Photo a Day Challenge. You have a list of photo prompts for each month, so you take a look at the prompt for that day, take a picture related to it, and post it anywhere you like. But we pick our favorites from Instagram. That's right. So the theme for April is numbers. And so today is the fourth. So number is four. So the, the number that we chose coordinate, not coordinates. It's the same number as it corresponds. is. Corresponds. Corresponds to the actual date. Yeah. Um, so what are we about to show them? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. Here come the photos. So those were our favorite photos. Great job, everybody. Um, it's never too late to join in. You take a look at the prompt for the day. Like I said, today is the 4th of April. So today's number is four. You interpret that however you want, whether it's like four stitches left, I've knit four rows, I've knit four inches, I have four inches left. Uh, there are four cats in my, cuddled around me while I'm working, whatever, or it can be I want today's. That. I know. Or it could be like, today is the fourth and this happened. I probably gonna post a picture of my earrings. Today I'm wearing cute cat earrings. But you interpret it however you want. You post it on Instagram. What? Speaking of cute cats, when do I get to see mine? Um, I will get her in a minute. She is sleeping currently. Um, so you post it on Instagram. In the caption, make sure you use hashtag GGK Crafty Pad and yours might get chosen. If you are participating in GG, GGK Crafty Pad and you have a private Instagram account, you need to make sure that Dammy, Dammy's Doodles, is following you because otherwise we can't see your photos. 
So send her a PM so that she's following you and then we're all good. And then your site get chosen. Um, upcoming events. Um, I'm going to be attending the Pacific Northwest Yarn Crawl. It runs from the 2nd to the 5th of May. I'm either going to be doing, most likely, either doing Friday or Saturday. And mm -hmm. I've got to see if Janine's going to be able to do it. If not, the Dr. Hubs has offered to chauffeur me around. The two things I'm going to be shopping for yarn for are for my Nanny Slobo sweater for this year, which is the uh, Swan Show, the Niddle Chick Swan Show that I've showed y'all before, and then I'm also going to be looking for yarn for the, what is the name of it? Uh, Q. Just a second. It's, it's like number four in my Q. Yeah. The Pom Pom Pop Shawl by Juliet Williams. It was from the, uh, it's from Spring and Summer 2019 Nitty, and as it sounds like, it has pom poms on the shawl. And it's epic. But I want to do one in autumnal colors because I don't have like an autumnal shawl. So I want to find something that is a nice, beautiful, my second favorite color, autumnal orange for the main color. And then get like a mini skein set for the, the stripes and the pom poms. Because you don't need a ton mm -hmm. of the yarn for the pom for the for the contrast stripes and pom poms. Let's see. It says um, you use. So she got she used twenty gram skeins that were eighty yards, seventy three meters a piece, and she used about twenty. Yeah, not twenty. She used about two thirds of each of them. So she used twenty about third. Two thirds. Mm -hmm. I know, I said 23rd at first. She used about two-thirds of each of them. So she used about 14, 15 grams of yarn for the contrast because it's like five contrast colors mm -hmm. or something. So um, so if I can find it, not, so probably what I'm going to do is for the Swan Show, I'm probably going to use commercial yarn just because I need so much of it. I think it's a DK weight and it needs like, I think it needs like 2,200 yards of yarn. And that is going to be totally cost prohibitive for me to buy it in an indie dyed um, yarn. So I'll probably use something commercial for that. But I want to do, uh, if possible, do indie dyed for the shawl. So if I can find a nice autumnal mm -hmm. orange and then do some contrast colors with it. So, um, okay, I think that's everything for this segment. So we should probably move on to the next one. And now we're going to talk about what we are reading, watching, and listening to. Yes. Okay. So what are you reading, Dami? I am reading a little bit of Dracula by Bram Stoker. And you're reading textbooks, I'm assuming? Yes. And my script for stage reading Saturday. Yep. Yeah. And something else? So a certain webcomic? The Glass Scientists, which is a webcomic by Sabrina Cotingo. Yes. So I'm assuming you're getting your 15 minutes a day in. Oh, yeah. What am I referring to? The Ralph. Uh, yes. Because we ended one and started the next, but we also have one ongoing. Mm. I know. Crazy. So, our jan so the Ralph is a uh, challenge to you to read 15 minutes a day every day. And... We have a finish line thread in the po in the group where you post in one post and you put all of your dates for that quarter and how long you read. And um, at the end of every quarter, we lock that thread. And so for January, for anybody who read 86 to 90 of the days, they got a 20% off a single pattern or $1.20 off an ebook coupon code from us, and they got a virtual badge, and then they all were entered into giveaway for, for an ebook. And then we also did for 59 to 85 days, 
uh, they got a virtual badge and they were entered into a giveaway for a pat single pattern of their choice from us. But we're also doing the year long read along. So every quarter you earn entries into the year long read along challenge pool thing. And at the end, at the beginning of 2020, we will draw randomly from those entries and three winners will each win a grand prize prize that includes things that are amazing. So, um, so Dammy for January, February, March, the people who read all 90 days got mm -hmm. 10 entries into the year long giveaways. They are also on track to earn 10 bonus points for reading all 365 days in 2019. So do you want to tell us who read all 90 days? I would love to. Okay. So A.A. A. Lauzon, A. Bingham, Angie's Hip, Beth Anna 2769, Celeste, Crafty Mom 2010, I Know Hour, Fuzzy Kit, Harps 57, Jennifer Reels, JP Music 15, Carlene Page, Large Print Knit, Mose Crochet, Penny Gale, Restraus, RMB Knitter, Share 2014, Silver Luna 2112, S. Estang Estangle, there we go. Um, when Wombat and Wombat Knitter, oh my gosh, that should not have tripped me up as much as it did. Yeah, no, she had like written a note and said that Stingle rhymes with Tingle. So, S Stingle. There we go. So, great job. Congratulations to everybody who read all 90 days. They got 10 entries into the year long competition. And then, Dammy, the people that read 86 to 89 of the days got eight entries into the giveaways for the, for the year long. So, why don't you tell us who those four people were? Fry Meister, Joe Dadaya, Knitter Chow, and Psycho Hulakian. Great job. Okay, so what I did is I took everybody who read 86 to 90 of the days, and I did random number generator, and I drew for six winners, and each of these winners is going to get to, get to choose one of our ebooks for their prize. You'll have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it. And you could just PM me Java Pearl and tell me which of our ebooks you would like to receive. So, Dami, do you want to tell us the six winners of each of the, an ebook from us? Yes. So, we have Beth Anna 2769, Frymeister, Moe's Crochet, Penny Gale, Share 2014, and S. Stengel. <laughs> Great job. So Beth Anna 2769, Frymeister, Moe's Crochet, Pity Gale, Share 2014, and S. Stingle, PMB, Java Pearl, and tell me which of our ebooks you would like, and I will gift those to you. Okay, and then Dami, everyone who read from 59 to 85 of the days got five entries into the year long giveaway. So why don't you tell us who those four people were? We have Crafting in a Galaxy. Crafty Textile Lady, Mockingbird Maid, and PJ Pearls. Great job. And I drew, I used, I used, uh, uh, had Siri give me a random number. And so the winner of any one of our single patterns uh, of your choice is? Crafting in a Galaxy. So Crafting in a Galaxy, PMB, Java Pearl on Ravelry, and tell me which of our single patterns you would like, and I will gift it to you. And again, y'all have 30 days to claim your prize. Great job, everybody. And we've started a new finish line for April, May, June. There are 91 days in April, May, June. So the numbers are a little bit different, but it's there in the thread in the Ravelry group. It's in our show notes. And just keep going. And uh, don't also don't forget about the... Modern Miss Darcy 2019 Reading Challenge, where you can earn six bonus entries into the giveaways. There's a certain cat at my feet right now, wanting a tail pet. And uh, like I said, you we will draw for three grand prizes at the beginning of 2020. Okay, what I'm reading. I am reading The Road Back to You by Ian Morgan Cron and Suzanne Stabil. I have not finished it, but I'm, I'm currently in the middle of reading about the third uh, type of the Enneagram. So I'm working on that. I am continuing to read When the Heart Waits, Spiritual Direction for Life's Sacred Questions by Sue Book Kidd. 
and really, really enjoyed that. It's very, very good. I am continuing to reread Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is book number four in the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. I'm rereading it along with Harry Potter and the Sacred Text podcast and Swish and Flick and All Potter podcast. Very sad news, Danny. I caught up. I have to wait. This I, is... So I, I haven't caught up to the Sacred Text because they're like a year ahead. They are already in book mm-hmm. five. But Swish and Flick, I have completely caught up. And I want to be able to listen to both podcasts. So now I'm going to have to wait week after week for them to come out. So um, the one that I just finished with was uh, when the names were being chosen by the Goblet of Fire and Harry Potter's name comes out at the very end as a fourth. Did you put your name on the Goblet of Fire, Harry? As the fourth name in the Triwizards Tournament. So... And then I finished reading book 11 of the Anna Pigeon series by Nevada Barr. This is the one that's set in um, national parks. This one, this last one was kind of weird because she like had a, a, like a great, great aunt or something that, so this, the national park is like a fort and it like, I think I talked about this on last week's episode. Anyway, it was a little weird. It wasn't, it, because she went back and forth, like, each, every chapter, every other chapter was, like, present day, but the other ones were, like, set back when her great great aunt or whatever lived there. It was a little strange. Um, I read Bonfire by Kristen Ritter. Yes, that Kristen Ritter, Jessica Jones. She wrote this book, and it was actually really, really good. I enjoyed it. Um, I, how it ended was unexpected for me. So, um, I enjoyed it. It was it was really pretty good. I read book number six in the Magical Cat series, mystery series by Sophie Kelly. Magical. And I'm currently reading I'm currently reading An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Picanon. Caden? How would you say that, Nami? I don't no, I don't have it open. Hold on. P-E-K-K-A-N-E-N. Picanon. Picanon. Okay. This is a psychological thriller that is totally creeping me out. Why are you reading it? Because I have to know what happens. Uh. But I don't want to spoil anything because it is like, woo! So, I will let you know what I think of it next week when I finish it. I'm sorry if I'm sounding like weird. My allergies are really bothering me today. Hi, Pinky. Um, oh. We have... Yeah, she's here, leading pets. Um, We had a lot, a lot of wind yesterday, and so the pollen got really, really uh, blown around, and so my allergies are kind of, oh, baby, hi. There's one one in cheek scratches. Hi, baby, I love you. Okay, but I need to tell them about what I watched on TV this week, babe. Okay, you want me to tell them? Did you watch it too? I think Carl watched all of these things with me. And she would like to make her opinions known that she liked most of the things, but not all of them. Some of them were scary for her. Oh, yeah. Okay. But the movie I watched, the movies we watched were not. Uh, I watched a Hallmark movie called A Brush With Love. And the lead actress in it was the, um, she played in Gilmore Girls, what was her name that married Dean? Lindsay? Yeah, that's it. That's who was the, the lead in this Hallmark movie. Yeah. Okay? Technology is being a pain yeah. in the butt. <laughs> um, and then we watched the Netflix movie Mowgli Legend of the Jungle. Netflix movie? Yes. I thought it was produced because there was the Disney one, but then I thought the other one was produced by Warner Brothers. I think it Oh, babe, hold on. I thought it was Netflix. Did it change hands? Yes. It was a, It is a Warner Brothers movie, but it was distributed through Netflix. Okay, that's interesting. I guess I just missed that. Yeah. So Cheers, it was okay. Yeah. It, was, it was okay. It wasn't like something to write home about, in my opinion. But it was okay. I'm still watching series four of Endeavor. 
Um, but I got obsessed with Jessica Jones and watched all of season one. And now I'm watching the Defenders miniseries that comes between season one and season two of Jessica Jones. Um, and then Shetland, I didn't realize it had come back. So I binged all six episodes of series five of that. Um, and it was really good. I enjoyed that. Uh, I'm watching season 10 of Trading Spaces. Um, can I just throw this in? It is okay not to like a room that a designer does, but that doesn't mean that you ha have the right to put that on the designer and talk about the designer and who she is negatively and call her names and be safe things because that has happened on the interwebs this week. I personally, and I think I've said it before here on the podcast, I am not a fan of Hildy's rooms, but Hildy's rooms are not the person of who Hildy is. And so while I don't like normally the rooms she does, that doesn't mean I don't like her as a person or that I would call her bad names. Do you know what I'm saying? This is, this is, this is why it was a good thing why social media wasn't uh, popular when the show started. <laughs> or even when I was in high school. Uh, I'm so glad social media was not around when I was like in junior high and high school. Paige Davis, uh, who is married to Patrick Page, so her name should be Paige Page, but it's not as Paige. No, her name is Paige Davis. Um, made a video and was like, okay, people. So the room she did this week was much more of a like, artistic it's like a like an art piece it was not in my opinion a good choice for a master bedroom now if she had done it as like a kid's playroom or like a home office it would have been really cool but it was like an art installation and it was very very well executed but it was not a good choice uh for a master bedroom uh, and actually the homeowners ended up, the, the friends that they had traded spaces with, they came over the next weekend and they, uh, they undid what Hildy did. <laughs> and changed the room. So anyway, so just keep that in mind, folks. There's been a few things like that this week where people think that because they are not talking to someone face-to-face, -face, that it's okay to say mean and ugly and awful things via the interwebs. And it's not okay. So, just think about, would you say what you're typing to this person if they were standing in front of you? Mm hmm Okay, that's all I have to say about that. NCIS season 16, guess what, Danny? What? Ducky isn't leaving. Quack, quack. He has been given the part-time position of NCIS historian. My gosh. And so he can come and go as he pleases. And they have an official name plaque, and then he opened the office door, and it's been like the storage room. So they have to do this into an office for him. <laughs> but it was a way to keep him there. <sighs> I was so happy. I was like, yes, Ducky's not leaving. Um, watching season five at NCIS New Orleans, season two of Star Trek Discovery. Um, okay, season six of The Blacklist, there was, this was a, there was two episodes this week. So Reddington's mentor got the best of him again. And Sabar is leaving the show. She went into hiding with Reddington's help because the Mossad ordered her assassination. Oh. When she tried to retire. Interesting. So she is gone from the show and she left Aram. Oh, that's sad. I know. Sad. He was going to go with her and she went by herself. Reddington helped her go by herself. So now I'm very sad for Rob. And sad for her as well. Um, okay, NCIS LA season 10. I don't know what the heck is going on, but they they made it seem like that Nell, Nell and Beale are going to be leaving the show. Oh. And uh, they made it seem like um, that... Well, because uh, Deeks and Kinsey got married, so they're probably going to be wanting to have children in the future, near future. And then Sam 
has been given a job offer from another agency with the government. It's, they're making it seem like that we're tired of all these ends. I'm like, no, the show has not been canceled. It hasn't been renewed yet, but none of the NCISs have been renewed yet. They most likely will. But here is a really cool thing that the Dr. Hubs and I were very excited about. Do you remember a certain TV show called um, JAG? Yeah. So, Harmon Rab and... What's her name? Who? The character of the... It's played by Catherine Bell. I don't know. Um, hold on. Just a moment. Let me just use my bestie, IMDb. Sarah McKenzie. That's who Catherine Bell plays. Um, they are both going to be on NCIS LA. Which is really cool. So it's making people say, think about, are they going to do, are they going to bring Jag back? Like all these years later now. But this is the first time that these two characters have been on NCIS, any of the NCISs since the, because Jag was the backdoor pilot for NCIS, the original one. Mm -hmm. So some of the other characters have been, specifically on NCIS, uh, Bud and his dad were both, I think, on NCIS at some point. But this is the first time for these two characters since the backdoor pilots. So, um, and then watching season four of Supergirl. Um, listening to my favorite murder podcast. And I need to unblock this and put it in the show notes. Could you make it yellow, please? Because it's quite yellow. The podcast that started at the beginning of April. It was no April Fool's joke. I told you all about it when we heard about it a few weeks ago. The Murder Squad. And they are crowdsourcing, trying to figure out some of these women who were murdered in this case they talked about this week. So, um, yeah. Um, David Tennant does a podcast this week with James Corden. And it was so funny, cracked me up, that he was talking about when they first came up with the concept for Carpool Karaoke, nobody wanted to be in it. Nobody. They talked to so many um, agents of, of singers and none of them wanted to do it. And then I think it was Mariah Carey was the very first one who agreed to do it. And from there, it's become a phenomenon. I think most recently was the Jonas Brothers. I don't think he's done another one since then. So, anyway, I love that. So, it was fun to listen to James Gordon. Um, and what have you been listening to? Uh, Cabin Pressure. Uh, Edwin Drood. Uh-huh. I want to do this show. I want to do that show. No one's doing it right now. Okay. And uh, the, the playlist I made of my French musicals. Um, have, have you been listening to the Cabin Pressure episode where... They, were they talking French? Yes, that has come on shuffle. Um, and you know what plays a musical that, that SPU is doing this next school year, but you can't talk about it publicly yet. Correct? No. We. We, you can't talk about it yet. But there's some really interesting ones because she did tell me, but I'm. My lips are sealed. I'm not telling anyone. Actually, I think I've told the Dr. Hubs, but that's it. Okay. That's okay. All. That's all for this segment, which has gotten really, really long. So we should move on to the next one. And now we're going to talk about our March, April, May, Sheepy, Spring Owl. Bah. Bah. 
So this owl started on the 1st of March and it runs through the 31st of May. It is for any project that you can knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince is related to spring. If you can't think of anything, you need in the spring. There are a couple of main rules for this owl. Um, the first is that no whips are allowed, so your project has to have been begun. That's not right, conjugation. Um, no earlier than the 1st of March and then finished no later than the 31st of May. And the other is that each project of at least 20 yards that you finish and post in the FO thread counts as one entry. But if your project is not at least 20 yards, you need to group it in a single post with other projects that total at least 20 yards. Yep. So feel free to poly dip in other owls that are going on as long as it fits in with the other rules, including the great podcaster graph craft together which there is a link to in our show notes yes um we've got prizes on our screen right now and it's the first podcast of the month so we're going to talk about them so you want me to start or you yep okay first up we have a floral circular and interchangeable needle holder case made by devon banks donated by Rhonda, who is dueling needles we have a honeybee project bag and stitch marker made and donated by teresa of jazzy jazzy creations we have four leaf stitch marker sets made and donated by Julia, who is Nimrus of Pandia's Jewels. Four winners will each win a random set. We have a skein of online super sock New York color 1625 that was donated by Eileen, who is leaner. Also donated by Eileen, who is leaner, is a skein of lace number one filigran in the 2519 colorway. Beautiful. Thank you so much to our donors. And yes. if you would like to donate a prize, you can PM Java Pearl on Ravelry or email us at geekygirlsknit at gmail.com. That's right. You must be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit podcast group on Ravelry in order to participate. There's a hashtag if you want to tag your projects on social media. No, if you want to post on social media or tag your projects on Ravelry, it is yep. GGK Spring 19. The FO thread is going to be locked on the morning of the 1st of June, and then winners will be drawn for the next podcast following that. And any winners will have 30 days to claim their prize or they forfeit it. There's okay. a chatter thread on Ravelry where we can encourage each other along the way and where I give shout outs to people who finish projects. But I also do that here, so I will do that right now. Awesome. We have DG White, I Now Hour, Philippa MC, Harps 57, Joda Daya, JP Music 15, Carlene Page, Kersey S, Knit Princess 83, Knitter Chow, K Wilson 670, Mommy 2, Nicole S, Panushka, Penny Gale, Restraus, Samash Williams 94, Share 2014, Skyly Knits, The Zincha, BT Kimmy Kim, Wombat Knitter, Yell Cat 2. Awesomeness. Great job, everybody. So it's not too late to join in. You have almost two full months to get your projects done and posted, and you might be a winner. All right, let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, the part of our show where you ask us things and we try to answer them. That's right. What is this week's question, Debbie? You're answering it first because I'm asking it. So... <laughs> So this week's question is from Jenny, who is Jennifer Reels from Missouri. What are your favorite snacks? Pick a favorite sweet snack and a favorite savory snack. So is savory like salty? Uh, sure. I just take it to mean like anything that's not sweet. Like I think beef jerky is a savory snack. Che I think cheese would be a savory snack. Are you Googling it? I, I am Googling it because, because... Why didn't you Google this before? I don't know. Because I didn't think about it because I was doing other things. Having a spicy or salty quality without sweetness. Okay. So, I can't pick one thing. I, I love tortilla chips, especially when I'm craving something salty, that's that. But I am a huge, huge, huge fan of cheese, all different kinds of cheeses. I had some Colby Jack cheese yesterday, and it was yummy. Uh, yeah, I like cheese. So what about you? What's, what's your savory? 
Oh, gosh. I also like cheese, but I'm not like fancy cheese. I, you like mm. Yeah, I like Covardi. I like Brie. Um, it's okay. I just like, I like, I like normal stuff like popcorn and stuff. Okay. Now sweet is sweet an issue Sweet and salty popcorn. Yeah. Sweet is an issue for me because there are very few sweet things that I do not like. It's true. Um, I'm a big fan of frosting on a cake or brownies. I will always ask for the quarter piece because there's no frosting on it. Um, I love candy. Um, runts, sprees, sweethearts, sour patch kids, uh, jelly beans. My favorite, favorite, favorite candy though is mellow cream pumpkins that you can only get in the autumn. And I also, my, probably the next, uh, one of the, another really high one is the uh, Cadbury eggs, the ones that have the crunchy shell outside with the chocolate inside. Mm. Do, you mm. make, do you know they make white chocolate ones now and dark chocolate ones? I knew, I knew that the dark chocolate ones, we've had the dark chocolate ones. Uh, yeah, they're good. Uh, but yeah, mm. I'm a fan of, go ahead. If, if. If they've already come out, can you bring me some? Um, I'll put it on the grocery list for your daddy to get. Okay, you. Then I won't have to share them with you. They'll all be mine. Okay, I'm putting them on the grocery list. Um, but yeah, I like I like most kinds of candy. I love chocolate. I'm not a fan of coconut at all. And I'm not, I mean, I like marshmallows like in hot chocolate, but I'm not a big like marshmallow person. S'mores sometimes. I have to be in the right frame of mind for s'mores. Although I saw somewhere the other day that somebody was making s'mores with Reese's peanut butter cups. And I was like, hello. Hmm. I love some peanut butter. Okay, Dammy, what about you for sweet? I'll I'll just eat I'll eat anything. I like I like dark chocolate. I like milk chocolate too. Um I like dark chocolate's Cadbury. probably your favorite though. Yeah. I like the I like the Cadbury eggs we were just talking about. Um You like dark chocolate bars, but it has to be the right amount of yeah. dark chocolate. I like the I like the candies that are like the slightly sour kind and the ones that are like kind of coated in sugar, like Sour Patch Kids and um, the strawberry sticky ones. The, yeah, the, the uh, straws. And Fun Dip. I love Fun oh, Dip. Oh, I haven't had Fun Dip in ages. So you want to send me some Fun Dip? Can I'm sure you can buy it somewhere. Yeah, I like I like yeah. anything. So uh, I don't yeah. like candy corn. It tastes like nothing. It's yummy. Um, so as you can tell, we really, really like our snacks. I can't choose just one thing. Uh, but what about y'all? Come to the Ravelry group at the episode thread and tell us your favorite sweet snack and your favorite savory snack. Thank you for the question, Jenny. And Debbie, if somebody has a question for us, what should they do? Go to our Ask the Geeky Girls thread in our Ravelry group and post it. That's right. All right, let's move on to the next, I was about to say episode, segment. We made it to the end of the show, even with me sounding like all allergy terrific. But it's not terrific. It's awful. You can be all allergy awful. Allergy awful. Don't like allergy, that. Allergy awful. Awful allergies. Um, I don't think we have any announcements. When you come home for Easter, is that the break where you have classes in the morning and then you come home? Uh, yeah. Okay. So we probably shouldn't wait and record when you come home then. Yeah. 
if you were to be off the whole day, it'd be easier. Okay, so everything's as normal. It's going to be an interesting episode to record the day after Wrinkle because I'll probably be home at like around 2 o'clock in the morning. Depending on how long it is because of the way the fairies run. And I don't really want to drive. Probably not going to be three hours. Um, I don't want to drive all the way around at, that late at night by myself. Yeah. So. Dammy is, as part of the theater crew, she gets to go to the preview and she has one extra ticket so the Dr. Hubs and I both can't come. So that is let's see why I'll be alone. Um yeah, so everything should be going as normal for the next few weeks. So um we'd like to say a humongous thank you to everyone who supports the podcast. Um no matter how it is you do it, we are grateful for you and if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be doing this. So we are so grateful to everyone who interacts with us, who watches, who listens, uh, who comments, whatever, uh, because y'all are amazing and we love you a lot. So, uh, but we'd like to say a humongous thank you to those of you who support us financially. Let's give them a heart. Wait, wait, wait. Close because enough. Unfor unfortunately, it does cost money to do a podcast, like shipping out prizes and technology and all that jazz. So there are three main ways you can support us financially. First is Patreon, which is a site where you pledge a certain amount a month to your favorite creatives, and you earn rewards based on the level you donate at. In fact, I will be doing Patreon rewards. Uh, it'll probably be Tuesday because they don't give me the information until the 6th and that's this weekend and then Monday I have to go across the water to go to the doctor so I'll probably do rewards on Tuesday then so if you're expecting a reward it'll be coming to you next week um, so Debbie if somebody wants to know more about Patreon or wants to sign up where should they go? Patreon.com slash Geeky Girls Knit and what's another way? There's a PayPal button in the sidebar of our website if you would like to make a one-time donation and we are Amazon.com.co.uk and .ca affiliates. If you're going to shop on Amazon, if you go to our website first and either click on the image or link in the sidebar or at the bottom of the show notes and then do your shopping as normal, Amazon will give us a little, little money back based on what you purchase. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it's a great way to support the podcast by doing something you were going to be doing anyway. Um, yeah. So, Dammy, why don't you tell them where to find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsnet.com. There are there are links to everywhere else we are online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. That's right. Well, with that, we're going to tell you goodbye. Remember that when you're talking to a person on the interwebs, there's a real person behind the screen. It's not just a screen. I know all of y'all are amazing. and. But sometimes we need a reminder because, especially if it's e email or text or some form of social media, you don't see that person's face when you're talking. So just remember, just a reminder to be kind. And we hope you have a great rest of your week. Hopefully you're not dealing with the allergy yuck. But if you are, I hope you get to feeling better soon. And we will see you next week. Happy knitting until then. Bye. Hi, Pink. Hi, Dammy. I didn't do that right. P I N K. There. I was sweeping. Mama got me up. I know. You look so grumpy. I was taking a nice nap. A nice nap. Hey, I was playing with my new toy this morning. <gasps> really? Yeah. Say, hey, Dammy, do you know what Saturday is? What Saturday, Pinky? I don't know. It's it my gotcha day. I know, because I was going through my Instagram highlights, and the oldest one is 51 weeks old. Yeah, I will be halfway with 
with with you and Mama and Baba for one whole year. Yeah, that means you put up with us for one whole year. And all of our cuddles. Because we like cuddles. Do you want to say anything? Hello? Hello? Oh, what was that noise? Somebody there. Hi. Hi. Oh. Say hi. Oh my goodness. Hi. Oh really? Hold on, hold on, we're not done. We can't get down yet. We gotta finish talking to Danny. You wanna tell her anything? Oh my goodness. Oh my can, lord. Can you interpret for us, Dammy? I think that means please pull me down. Human, stop holding me. Stop giving me all this love cuddles. Okay, say bye bye to Dammy. Bye, Dammy. I love you. Mm -hmm. I, oh, I love you too.